everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace, hanging out with Teresa. And in this episode, we're gonna to demonstrate to you the difference between incident and reflective metering. So what the heck is that and uh, how does it work? Well, Teresa's got my light meter here. This is a very fancy light meter. This is a uh, Seconic L858DU. You might have seen light meters like this and you'll notice that they have this weird thing. So this guy right here uh, is actually a thing you look through and then you have this lumosphere up here. And what's happening on the light meter with this kind of a light meter is this part right here, this lumosphere, what it does is it's doing what's called incident metering. And what this part right here is doing is what's called reflective metering. Um, and so what are the differences between those two things? Why is it important and how does it work? Well, um, I also need to show you this. This is my camera. So Teresa, if you can zip back here to the panels, I'm gonna just uh, explain some of this stuff. So you probably know uh, incident and reflective metering by a different name, TTL or manual. And so reflective metering works like this. Light comes traveling down and it hits whatever the subject is. It bounces off that subject. It goes through the lens. The camera figures out how much light is coming off of that. It calculates the exposure and an exposure is made. Now with our light meter, if we're looking through the little reticle, the little aimer thing, it's doing the same thing. We're pointing that light meter at something. Light is reflecting off of that, going through the light meter and figuring something out. That is reflective metering, otherwise known as through the lens metering, TTL metering. And in studio lighting and a lot of uh, lighting, it's not considered to be as good as incident light metering. Incident light metering, so when you put your light meter up, light travels, it hits the light meter, the light meter just figures out how much light is hitting it, and it calculates the exposure. So why would you use one over the other? Because traditionally, through the lens metering, it's much easier. You just point your camera at what you're shooting at and take a photo, and it should work. Well, what we have to know is how light meters figure out exposure. So what light meters do is they take all the different exposure values, the brights, the darks, the middles, everything in between. They put them in a big blender, they mix them up, and they expect those to come out middle gray, something like my shirt. And so if you have white and you have black, you mix it together, it's gonna come out middle gray. And in nature, when we look at most scenes, when we mix those scenes up in a normal sunlit day, those tonal values will all get scrambled up and come out to be 18% gray, middle gray. So all light meters, the one in our camera, the one that we use in the studio, calculate a correct exposure at middle gray. And that's where the problems begin. So to understand this, we have some interesting things back here. So we have this white panel here, we have this black panel here, and then Teresa is gonna bring out this uh, light over here. So we've got this guy right here and we can turn it on and off and it's got sort of this orange light shining into our camera. And so we are going to see how these three things can mess up reflective metering. It can get it wrong. So how come? Well, if you have all white, let's say that you are shooting a uh, bridal party. She's in a white dress. She's in a white chapel. Um, there's, uh, there are white walls. Everything is very, very white. Or maybe you're skiing, so you have a great group photo and there's snow everywhere. Maybe you're doing a scenic photo. There's some awesome trees, but it's really, really snowy everywhere. So it's white, 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 white. The camera is gonna mess it up. Reflective metering is gonna mess it up. And so to emulate that, we have this white panel. And so what I'm going to do is I have my flash turned on and I have my camera set to reflective metering, otherwise known as TTL metering, through the lens metering. So the camera is gonna see the light coming from this flash and it's gonna bounce off this white panel, and go into the lens, through the lens, and it's expecting this to be gray, but it's not, it's white. The same thing is true of this panel over here. Let's say that you're shooting that same wedding and you're shooting the guys 
and they all have black tuxedos on. They're in a different part of the wedding chapel. It's got dark panels. It's uh, very, very dark. Well, what's gonna happen is the camera is expecting all of those values to be gray, and so it's going to get it wrong. Let's see how that works. So, I've got my camera set to TTL metering, and Teresa, if you can just move that light over just a little bit. So, TTL metering, I've got my light here. I have my camera set to F8, and so it's gonna tell the flash how powerful it should be based on the value that it sees. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to take a photo of just the white panel. So I'm going to focus this, take a shot of the white panel. When we look at that, that panel is gray because our camera is expecting all of these values to be gray. It got it wrong. If you were shooting a white wedding dress in a white room on snow, whatever, it's gonna be underexposed. It's going to be gray because it's expecting all those values to be gray. What happens if we shoot the black panel? Well, it's gonna do the opposite. So I'm just shooting that. I'll take a photo and look at that. The black panel is gray. It is overexposed because the camera, the reflective metering expects that stuff to be gray, but watch what happens if I shoot both panels at the same time. So I'm just going to point at both panels, take a shot. The black is black, the white is white, and it is exactly as we expect because black and white together come out to middle gray. So it gets it correct. Here's another issue that we could have. So Teresa, I'm gonna have you come out to about right here, and I'm gonna take this light Let's say this light is a city neon light, or a billboard, or a TV in a room, or anything that is projecting light to the camera. Well, the camera is gonna think that's light that's being reflected, and it could also get that wrong. So if I'm gonna widen this out, I'll take a shot. We'll look at that, and sure enough, Teresa, is underexposed because the camera is looking at this light. It thinks that it's light that's bounced off of something. It expects it to be middle gray and everything is just off. Watch what happens when I turn this light off. It's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn this light off and I haven't changed anything on the camera. My TTL metering is still the same. I'm gonna take a shot of Teresa, click, and look, it's still a wacky exposure because the camera is not smart enough to know what's going on in the room, and that's why we have to go in and start using things like exposure compensation to tell the camera, hey, what you thought was right is wrong, so this was supposed to be right, it came out gray, so let's take the exposure compensation and bump it up by two stops. Or, this black wall turned out to be gray, you got it wrong, let's take the exposure compensation down by two stops, until it gets it right. And so when you're using reflective metering, the camera can mess up. So here's the difference. Let me have my meter, please. Thank you very much. The difference is an uh, 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 incident light meter like this, if I use this, I point this at whatever, whatever light is hitting this lumosphere, it doesn't matter what color the wall is, the outfit is, the snow is, it doesn't care. It's actually looking what is the light that's hitting this thing right here. And this lumosphere, this white lumosphere, actually converts that to a middle gray and the exposure is correct. So let's try it out. So Teresa, if you can grab that light and just zip over there. So let's see what happens when I switch my, uh, my camera over to manual mode, my flash over to manual mode. And now I'm going to meter that light. So if I meter it on this side, it meters at 3.6. So that is very, very, uh, not very much light. I'll meter it over here, meter that again. It meters at 3.6. This doesn't care if this is white or black or if there's light coming forward. In fact, let's take this out now Let's turn this on. 
let's put this in front as close as we can and meter that. And that meters at four five. So we're a little bit closer. If we could get this back all the way, it would meter at 3.6 exactly the same. So this meter, this incident light meter, is more accurate most of the time because it doesn't care what the light is reflecting from. It doesn't care if it's white or black or middle gray or a mixture of colors. It's colorblind. It only sees what's actually hitting the light itself, and that can be much more accurate. In fact, let's try it out. So, Teresa, come on, we'll have you stand just right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to meter this. That meter's at five, if you'll hold that. I'm going to set my camera at F5. Okay, F5, perfect. And then I will take a shot. Bam. And look, Teresa is exposed correctly, the white is exposed correctly, the black is exposed correctly, everything is right. Because incident metering works better because it doesn't care what the light is bouncing off of. So why would you use reflective metering? So this fancy camera right here, or this fancy meter right here has this little reticle where you can look through and do all kinds of things. Why would you use that? Well, that's an advanced uh, tool that you can use if you know the zone system, the Ansel Adams zone system or advanced metering. So you can take this and you can very specifically do some things with it because it's a one degree spot. It's very, very specific. So I could look through here and see exactly how much light is on her cheek as opposed to the other cheek, as opposed to her forehead, as opposed to her hair, as opposed to the background or whatever. And using a scale and some advanced techniques, I could then check out the dynamic range of my camera and do a bunch of things. And so that's why meters like this have that on there. It's a much more advanced metering technique. Or if you're shooting something like, uh, let's say Yellowstone or some uh, really amazing nature and you need to figure out the difference between the waterfall and the canyon below to see if your camera's dynamic range can capture that, well, you can't run <laughs> with a, uh, an incandescent meter like uh, uh, incident meter like this and go to the waterfall and meter it and then hike down into the canyon and meter that because by the time you do that hours are in between you know unless you had a helicopter and superpowers you couldn't do that but what you can do is use the reflective metering and check the relative values between those different things and that's what this is really for it's to look at relative values it's to look at is this, how much brighter is this panel than this panel? How much brighter is the waterfall than the canyon or whatever it is that you're trying to do? That's why these meters have that. The other advantage to through the lens metering or reflective metering in scenes like this is if you do have something that's backlit. So let's say you did have a billboard or something like this coming through. What you could do with that if you uh, are savvy, hold that for a second, because you can't really, let's say this is a uh, hundred feet away, maybe it's a billboard on, on, in Times Square, you can't figure out what the exposure value of that is because you can't take your incident meter, climb up onto the skyscraper and measure the billboard, but what you can do is you can point your camera at that and figure out what the correct exposure is and make note of that and then look at your subject and figure out the values. And so TTL metering is great for all kinds of things and for a lot of things like weddings, event photography, um, where you're on the go moving. If you know those exposure compensation values, which tend to be pretty much consistent, it's much, much, much faster to use reflective metering than incident metering. So that's the difference. So for me, if I'm in the studio and I'm trying to work and make sure I dial my lights in correctly and precisely, I use a light meter, incident metering. If I'm out shooting scenic photos, if I'm out doing anything that's run and gun, weddings, events, things like that, I'm using reflective metering and getting stuff through the camera. And if I need to, I can make exposure compensation adjustments. There you have it. All right, Teresa, come on up, let's say goodbye. So Teresa has been in so many videos that we have worked together. And so if you wanna see more of her work, I've included a link in the description of this video to her Instagram profile. You don't wanna miss it because it's pretty darn awesome. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. It's absolutely free. 
We're posting new, comment, uh, to new content every single day with a team of amazing contributors. You don't want to miss that. Make sure you turn on the bell because, you know, with YouTube, if you don't do that, you're going to miss out. Nobody wants to miss out. I don't want to miss out. I want to see it all. So make sure you turn on the bell. Thanks so much for joining us, and I'll see you again next time.